Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 17 of my Arsenal Football Manager 2015 playthrough and today I've got for you guys the head-to-head -head live commentary against Manchester City. Before that, time to just recap the games that we have played in the meantime because I know that you guys like to be kept up to date with what's going on. Uh, so in the last episode we played Manchester United and we won 3-0. I kind of asked for people's opinions on how they'd like to see me go about doing the next set of games. Uh, it was fairly mixed, so I decided just to go with my personal preference of a bit of a longer chunk. So you can see in between kind of the games here, we've only lost two, which is pretty darn impressive. Uh, we kicked off this kind of run of results with a good 3-1 win against Aston Villa. Uh, you can see here, looking at the stats and whatnot, that we were pretty good. Uh, Depay did get a hat-trick, which was really, really impressive. Uh, he's been performing particularly well. I believe he's got three hat-tricks. Uh, so far, kind of in the time period that you guys last were here, uh, there's been a few changes going on at the club. Depay scoring, or Memphis scoring, has certainly been one of them. He's been really hitting some form. Unfortunately for us, he seems to score a hat-trick or no goals at all, which in some ways I'd almost rather that we, uh, you know, did well uh, and he, he got one or two goals a game and we won by one or two goals rather than what seems to happen, which is we absolutely smash teams and then there's other games where we just failed to score, of which there were actually a few of those games uh, in this little run. I believe we lost to both Norwich and I think we drew against Cardiff as well and I believe in both those games we failed to score, which really is a little bit unacceptable. Uh, that goal by Depay there was a really good one. Uh, he ran past a lot of men and smashed it in if you missed that you might want to rewind to watch it that did get second place in the goal of the month award the winner was actually scored by Pogba and uh, Pogba was someone who in the last episode I kind of highlighted as a player who I wanted to see do a little bit more for us I talked about our new system that I was hoping was going to utilize him a lot more and uh, that's certainly been the case in his last five games he's averaged a 7.0 average rating which is really impressive uh, but as you can see here Depay was the man of the moment in this game and he got his hat trick here uh, with a back post header which I've now just failed to skip over well done Jack you guys saw the goal if you didn't then I'm sorry imagine how it went in uh, the next game again as I mentioned was another high scoring one this time we beat Blackburn 4-0 uh, which was another really good result Good to see Blanc get on the goal and two own goals also helped our cause. Looking at the stats, incomplete control. And to be honest, with our new system, we're having plenty of shots on goal. And in fact, uh, more often than not, we should be dominating teams when we have loads of goals and we don't, you know, we, we draw or we fail to score despite the amount of shots. And then there's other games like this one against QPR, where it's fairly 50-50 in terms of the total shots and the chances created. Uh, and perhaps we smash them 4-1, as in, in in this instance, as you can see, uh, Memphis getting another hat-trick, this one coming in the space of 13 minutes, which was really impressive at the start of the uh, first half. Anyway, next game here was against uh, Liverpool, and it was a game at which Pogba got two goals, which was really impressive. Uh, he's been playing really well for us, and this was a good example of that. You can see, looking at the stats, we completely dominated Liverpool at home. Uh, possession was close, but everything else on the park, we were the better team on. One of Pogba's goals here was an absolute screamer. I believe it was the second, so I recommend that if you're maybe listening to this video, you come and have a look at it, because it was pretty spectacular. Uh, it was a first-time hit from outside the area. Unfortunately, because my my laptop's terrible and I can't record 3D very well at all. You are going to have to witness it and kind of embrace it in 2D quality. But to be honest, it's very easy to uh, imagine how this goal went in because he just he, he just hammered it first time. You saw it there. Incredible shot. 35 yards out. That was his second goal of the game. And good to see Memphis getting the assist there. So that was that win. That was a really important win against Liverpool. We did, however, unfortunately follow things up by uh, losing to Sheffield Wednesday. I talked a little bit about the FA Cup uh, last episode and how we were expected to reach the final. Unfortunately, we fell at the first hurdle, which was really disappointing. And as you can see here, we got FM'd, as the saying goes. I don't really believe in being FM'd. And if you don't know what being FM'd is, it's when they have one shot and it goes in on target and you absolutely dominate the game. And to be honest... We did get FM'd, if you want to call it that, but it was disappointing by us. We were very complacent and we went down and we had 70 minutes of chasing a game away at Sheffield Wednesday. And ultimately, we should really be scoring and we simply didn't. Players like um, Fierro, who I've signed and I'll come on to my transfer shortly, came on and uh, failed to make a difference. And it was disappointing. 
Anyway, following on from that, we did beat Tottenham, of course, our local rivals, 3-0. This was, again, my contemplated live coming. Uh, looking at the stats, we had loads of chances. 36 shots, 13 on target. Uh, Tottenham only having one on target. It is a little bit of a concern, perhaps, the lack of shots on target in relation to our shots. You may notice that uh, looking at our kind of team performances, the fact we seem to have all these shots uh, but have a lot less on target. I've been playing around with shout stuff like work ball into box, passing it shorter, uh, but right now they're not when I when I change to work ball into the box, we stop having shots altogether and we start having chances altogether. I found that it's kind of been counterproductive in terms of we just don't have any shots as opposed to maybe having too many shots and a lot from range. Um but anyway, that was, I believe, Fierro's first goal, or is Fierro's first goal coming up here? No, the last goal was Fierro's first goal in the 79th minute. It was a really good one for him. You can see, looking at the stats here, uh, we, we were just very good here. 87% of tackles won is really, really impressive. Um... But yeah, an another good performance and Barboza starting up here. Uh, one thing I have been struggling perhaps a little bit with this year is actually the rotation of our team. Uh, simply because obviously I signed a lot of players with the, the kind of uh, thought that I was going to be playing a 4-2-3-1. And as you guys know from last episode, I've really changed the system a lot. And in dropping uh, our centre attack in mid, it's kind of meant a little bit of a rejig. Anyway, as you can see here, we lost 2-0 to Norwich. I mentioned that already. That was a disappointing result. We then beat Crystal Palace 1-0, which was a good result. Uh, Dummett got sent off for them. As you can see, another game we dominated, but only scored one goal from. It's a recurring issue, one that does need to be addressed. Uh, we then drew 0-0 with Cardiff in a game that we dominated and didn't have too many shots. But Latin did get a man of the match for, I believe, the second game in the row there. And we rounded things up with a 4-0 win against Hull and uh, Memphis grabbing himself another hat-trick. So that's what's been going on on the pitch. Fair few games, perhaps I went through them in a little bit too much detail. I'd be interested to, for you guys to let me know what I just did there. Would you like to see more of that, where I show a lot more of the highlights in game and talk a little bit about what's been going on in the games? Or do you prefer the briefer, kind of short and snappy reviews of the fixtures that I've gone through? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, uh, it has been January, so before we get into today's game, which is going to be a top-of-the-table clash against Man City, and actually looking at the top of the table, well, you can see here, it's really, really close. We're on 53 points. Uh, Chelsea with a game in hand are on 54, so they're kind of in the driving seat right now, but uh, we, we've closed the gap considerably, considering where we were kind of 10 games into the season. Anyway, let's have a look at the transfers, because there was an unexpected shake-up, I guess you could say. Um, I made some changes that I didn't expect to make and uh, this is going to annoy some viewers, <laughs> I can already tell. So uh, we'll talk about the outs first because they're the ones which are going to annoy people and then we'll move on to the positives. So on the outs, I've sold Koscielny, Ozil and AU. Now, now hear me out here, okay? So we've sold Koscielny, 30 years old, I've sold him for a pretty cut price. I've sold him for £9 million but he'd only played seven games for us and... <sighs> I mean, he he's, he wasn't getting any younger and he had a year and a half left on his contract and uh, he wanted to move away because he wasn't getting enough first-team football. We've had John Stones and Belanta really playing for us in the middle. These two guys at centre mid. I mean, Belanta's incredible if we now show John Stones, who I kind of bigged up before. If I just show you the polygons, you can see these two guys are very, very good centre-backs. Belanta's really good defensively. John Stones a little bit more technically rounded, but they've kind of formed a partnership, I guess, at the back, which is really nice to see, to be honest. Two very, very young defenders uh, forming a partnership, which can hopefully, you know, last for a little while. So Koscielny kind of found himself out in the cold, and he wasn't happy with that. He wanted to move on, so I managed to get him a move to Seville. The next player we sold was Ozil, and uh, Ozil was a player who I toyed with selling before, but the only offers I'd had had been from teams in the Premier League. Unfortunately, I only got £40 million for him, which is not ideal, but with me dropping my centre attacking mid, and the fact I've been playing Ozil at centre mid, um, and perhaps not getting the most out of him, I decided to move him on. Now, I know that um, obviously last season he played centre mid for me and he did an okay job, but since then we have brought in players like Janazai, there's been a few other younger players come in, I want to give them more of a run out in the first team. Ozil only played nine games up until January, and that was very much rotating him in. And he very, very rarely kind of contributed. He got one assist in nine, which just isn't good enough, really. So we've moved him on. And to be honest, to get forty million for him, I'm pretty darn happy with. The last transfer is another centre mid, and it is Andre Ayew, who I have sold for eighteen point five million pounds. Uh, of course, we picked him up on a free transfer in January. 
you can see looking at his career stats here he played three games for us and averaged a 7.5 free average rating but again he was a bit of a rotation option in midfield uh, Dortmund were interested and in six months of him being at the club having brought him in on a free we've now sold him on to Dortmund for 18.5 million pound you can see since he's joined them he's been absolutely awful so I'm kind of happy with this bit of business it's a good bit of business AU is not a bad player by any means but given the kind of shift in shape which I've already mentioned a little bit and given as a reason for perhaps the Ozil sale given I bought AU in on a free kind of perhaps with the hope in the back of my mind I could move him on for some money like I did for with Umtiti Burr last season I think that was um, and we've kind of done the same this time uh, he, he's gone for 18 million pounds which is a fantastic bit of business so you're probably sat there wondering well Jack you've sold essentially just over 60 million pounds worth of players coming up to 70 million how have you kind of spent that and the simple answer is I've reinvested and I've reinvested very heavily into a solid, solid set of young players. I did sign Carlos Vieira, who is the only non-regen I've signed. Uh, I just wanted an extra striker, to be honest. He's a very good young player. Uh, you can see he's a very good Carlos Fierro in terms of um, with him having a minus potential ability and also playing in Mexico he can sometimes be a little bit hit and miss. Uh, you can see here I bought him in for £11 million, so that was his release clause on his contract. He scored plenty of goals at Chivas. He's going to come in here. Uh, I'm going to give him until the end of the season to try and force his way into the first team. If that fails I'm going to look to get him a loan out to another strong Premier League team. He's a player with a load of potential. And from there, uh, we move on to the regens, of which there are 10, and I've spent big on some of these. These are players who I'm hoping are going to come into the club and make a difference for us. Uh, there's a fair few here, so you'll have to forgive me for being quite brief with these, because I don't want to make this episode too long to be me just rambling over fixtures and regens individually. I did mention a few episodes ago about the potential of doing a regen series, kind of where I talk about the development of players. Uh, I'm still not sure if I'm going to be going ahead with that. Uh, it seemed fairly popular for the most part. Uh, just one of the issues with it is that, is that this this save isn't going to be a kind of long-term save necessarily my plan right now is to do the save for maybe the end of this year maybe one more season at the end of this and then this will become my stream save and then from there we're going to start with the tracksuit to the top series anyway i'm going away on a tangent here so let's talk about these players individually really quick uh, the first one here is kasunic uh, and he is a croat he is uh, 16 years old he has eight under 21 caps and he's a goalkeeper and he's a pretty good goalkeeper he's got good mentals particularly his determination which i love to have uh, kind of in quality i guess with a goalkeeper but he's also got good stuff like anticipation concentration and perhaps attributes which are not so easy to improve if they're not particularly good to begin with overall he's a keeper with some potential we're going to have to keep an eye out on him uh, you can see here he joined us from dynamo uh, kiev i guess that is uh, for 1.2 million pounds and he was playing in their first team for them anyway the next player in was from Blue de Gret, who of course for a team who have kind of made a name for themselves in real world football uh, because of course they made it to the Champions League this year and uh, you can see here we have uh, Boyan Mitev and this guy is I want to say Belarusian he's Bulgarian I'm a liar uh, but you can see him here 16 years old good defensive midfielder uh, some good potential technical attributes are fairly solid good speed good physical good defensive stats uh, looking at it here got really good physicals which are probably the harder attributes to improve in a player uh, that combine that with some fair only solid mentals particularly in the key areas for a player kind of playing in the position he's going to be in perhaps lacking a little bit of bravery and some fairly solid technicals he's going to be a very good player for us i hope uh, you can see here uh, he would uh, kind of fit in with our team handles himself well um he's a good player for league one sides but you can see here potential ability is three and a half st uh, three stars potentially obviously the black stars this year um are a new thing uh, for those people who don't understand basically the gold stars are a minimum potential ability and um, black stars are a potential perceived ability so this is the potential ability perceived by a assistant manager should the player really excel and play well uh, it's essentially a margin of error um, what happens is now your assistant manager is a lot less likely to overestimate a player's ability um, he's a lot more likely to underestimate their potential ability however the black stars are an indication of what the player could become in his estimations does that make sense i feel like it's tough to explain that one but hopefully you guys understand what i meant uh, the next player in is another croat and this guy is again played for the under 21 side his name is moro makan he is 16 years old and again he's a pretty useful player uh, he is a very well-rounded player good technical attributes particularly his technique is good passing is solid dribbling first touch 
pretty solid at this level. His physicals are a little bit on the low side, but he's got some okay mentals, so he's the kind of player to keep an eye on. A few of these players I don't really expect to break into the first team. There are certainly a few which I have high hopes for, and I'll identify them as we get to them. And I guess we'll start off by identifying one here. This is Bas Bremer. Uh, we sold it, signed him from Zvol. Uh, I believe I pronounced that right, and they play in Holland. He joined us for £7.75 million. Pounds. As you can see here, he's made 17 appearances for them, averaging a 6.62 average rating. He's an incredible centre-back, and I mean that when I say that. He's a very good at 16. He's got the aerial ability. He's got some really nice mentals for a player who's 16. I'm laughing looking at these attributes because I can see he's going to be a star, and it's written all over him. Uh, you can see his attributes are, are scary. Perhaps lacks a little bit of pace and a little bit on the physicals. I wouldn't mind his agility and perhaps his balance and strength being a tad bit better. But nevertheless, he's 16. He's got loads of time to develop. Initially here, we're going to be focusing on his speed because that's something I'd like to improve in him. You can see he's established himself at under 21s level. Only real concern for him if we look at the coach report is um, the fact that um, he's a little bit slow, as we mentioned. Uh, and also he can only play centre-back. There were initial concerns from my um, coaches that he had low consistency. However, they seem to have ignored that now, so hopefully he can push on. As you can see here, he has got four-star potential with five-star black stars, so he is going to be a world-class centre-back at the very least. Next player we have is Sven Weber, and he is an Austrian player. Uh, as you can see, another youngster, 17 years old, Incredible, just a very useful striker. Not one of the players with the biggest potential abilities, but a player who I'm certain that I can make some money off. We signed him for £2.5 million. Pounds. If we look at his coach report here, you can see he has two-star potential ability, which is okay. It's an average rating for a Premier League team, so he's going to be a Premier League quality centre-back. Some really nice strengths about him too, in terms of his pace and the fact he can play a couple of positions. And all in all, just a very good signing to sign him for £2.5 million. Pounds. The next player we have is a player whose last name I don't even want to kind of attempt, so we're just going to call him Ant. Another Croatian, actually, a fair few Croatians in this window, but this guy, 17 years old, really good centre-back, great core defensive attribute, you can see that from the polygon there, but looking more in detail, he has some really nice physicals all above 10, which is what I want to see. In terms of his mentals, really solid again. Stuff like positioning being good is uh, important, concentration's good, anticipation's good, Perhaps, again, bravery a tad on the low side for a player who's likely to play centre-back. But nevertheless, and a very, very good player. And uh, at 17 years old, to sign him for £2.5 million, I'm a very happy bunny. There's two players here who I'm going to skip over. I'm going to come up to them at the end. So we'll go on to this guy, uh, Buliga. Uh, he is Bulgarian. No, he's not. He's Belarusian. Okay, so I called the Belarusian Bulgarian and the Bulgarian Be Belarusian. I can't even talk. That is a mouthful. Uh, looking at this guy's stats. Good player. As you can see, he's a fully-fledged international at the age of 18. Some potential there. Good determination. Perhaps lacks a few of the other key mentals I'd like to see in my centre-back. Positioning's a tad on the low side. But nevertheless, he has some good aerial ability for a player his age in terms of his jumping. He's a player who could develop and maybe worth some money in the future. Uh, as you can see, we've loaned him back as part of our deal. But he only joined us for £1.7 million, So I think he's a pretty decent signing at that. And the last player who isn't one of the players who I'd kind of go, yes, this guy's a key player, is this guy. And his name is... Kai Nast. I, I hope I did his name justice there. We could just call him Philip. It's a lot easier. 16 years old, this guy. Really good player. Again, some really nice physicals. In, fa in fact, his pace is scary. 16 agility is really nice. Good flair. Perhaps determinations I've had on the load side, but we can chew to that. Looking at his technicals, there's none that really stand out. Perhaps his technique at 14 is pretty solid, uh, but he's the kind of player who, with some good development over the next four or five years, could really become something special. Anyway, last two players you can see here both came in for 8 million. We'll start off with Lambert here. Uh, probably the worst of the two, but nevertheless an incredible player. Uh, you can see here Bel Belarusian. No, Jack, he's not. He's Belgian. There needs to be less country style with the letter B. Can we can we request that? Anyway, let's have a look. Ferdinand Lambert here. You can see technique. Holy Santa Claus poop. I'm not going to swear. Uh, he has 18 first touch, 16 long shots, 17 technique and 14 dribbling. Those techniques uh, and kind of technical attributes, insane. Looking at his mentals, good flair, good determination, good aggression. 
aggression's fairly useful. Fancy's Composure's 14 is fantastic. Off the ball, perhaps a tad on the low side, and his physicals, looking at them, not super fast. You know, he's not going to break the land speed record, but they're solid enough. Uh, and 17 natural fitness and 16 stamina make me think he's going to be a very, very good engine in the centre of the midfield for years to come. A player with a bright, bright future ahead of him. Joined us from Club Bruges, as I mentioned, for 8 million. And the last player, perhaps the best player I picked up, or at least one of the best, is this guy, Yashin Royer. As you can see, uh, he's a French player. Hasn't actually played at under-21s level. One of the few players who I signed who hasn't kind of played it on a large international stage in terms of for the under 21s or main team uh, but nevertheless he's probably the best player I picked up uh, 16 years old uh, 20 determination 17 passing 16 vision that vision is incredible you can see here preferred role is actually deep line playmaker I'm probably going to train him to play center mid because I think that's where he'll be more useful for us but looking at his attributes you can see here good technicals Solid mentals, you know, good decisions, which is useful as a centre mid. Concentration will improve with time. Good teamwork, good work rate. His speed is there, but it's as good as it needs to be. Stamina and natural fitness for a centre mid are fantastic. But the thing that I love about this guy is just his first touch, his passing and his vision. He's going to be able to see loads of passes and pick them out from deep. And he's only 16 years old. I also like the fact he's left-footed because I kind of, I don't know, I, f I feel like left-footed players, you can sometimes use them a little bit more versatilely. Maybe that's just me. Um, but other than that, a very good player. Perhaps likes a few defensive attributes, you know, the fact his tackling's only 10, marking is 6, um, positioning is 10. They're attributes I'd like to improve if possible, particularly if I do end up playing him in a slightly deeper playmaker role. Looking at his coach report here, you can see here uh, that his strongest area of game is his pace. Um, he can play a couple of positions. He's driven, which is very important, has a, a good personality. And looking at his potential ability, you can see there, 4-star potential, 5-star uh, kind of uh, black star potential if you can call it that I need to come up with a better way of phrasing that but anyway those are the players we brought in this is going to be a very long episode hopefully you guys have enjoyed it so far we're now going to get on into the Man City game without further ado because otherwise I'm going to be rambling for a very very long time uh, looking at the squad that we have at our disposal pretty strong all in all Sterling going to be playing the center mid role for us it's a role that he's picked up a little bit uh, recently. I've been training him to play there. He's very good in that kind of advanced playmaker role, of course. He did play down the centre attacking mid role for us last year. He's now adapting to a slightly deeper role, but it's a role that he's more than adequate to play. Uh, Pogba's coming back from injury, so we'll keep him out the side just for now. Uh, without any other exceptions... Um, I think we're looking okay. The, the, the squad's pretty much full strength. Uh, we'll bring in Wiltshire to fill in Pogba's space. Uh, Gibbs has been playing well for us at left back, so we'll give him a run out there. Looking at the average ratings just real quick, because I haven't really reviewed my squad this episode. You can see Balanza has been a top performer. Royce has played well. So is John Stones. Bit of a testament to our defensive prowess. In terms of goals this year, Depay and Zivkovic really leading the way. Depay, of course, got three hat-tricks. Uh, in about a month and a half, which is really impressive. But anyway, let's get into today's game. We are playing Manchester City away. Um, hopefully we can get the result here. I don't know why the table's not loading. There we go. Uh, if we win here, it's a big result and it will see us leapfrog Manchester City into at least third place. We need to catch the pack ahead. And I've been saying that every time we play one of the big teams in these episodes. But this is one of these times where it's crunch time in the league now. If we win this, we have a chance to go top. If we win this, we kind of maintain some pressure on the teams ahead of us. If we slip up here, suddenly we're kind of we no longer have our fate in our own hands. And I know to an extent we don't have that now, right now, kind of because Chelsea have this game in hand. But if we lost this, it would probably be the end of our title hopes for this year. I'm hopeful that we can get a result, however. Uh, we have a fairly good record against Manchester City and Memphis has been playing really well. As Raheem Sterling goes on a run, Sanchez options in the middle. Can he whip it in? He can. Off the crossbar, Royce options get squeezed out. And I'm going to be honest, that's one of the few times this year in the FM15 match engine I've seen a cross hit the crossbar. Of course, that is a, a common sight in football managers, so to see it perhaps slightly less often than last year is impressive. Anyway, we deal with the ball there, looking at the stats. Manchester City playing a lot better at the moment, and they're on the attack here. Vincent Company uh, kind of lurking up the pitch. Now Samoa cutting inside. Can we put in a tackle? We can't. Aguero's there. He scores. Disappointing start right now. We are not playing our best football. Um, how do I want to change that? This That is the question. 
do I, I'm going to make a few minor changes, I think, off the bat here. Um, we're going to switch, a bit curiously, I'm going to switch to a 4-4-2. I've not actually tried this tactic with this team, so it's going to be a bit of a learning experience. But we're, we're just going to change things up a little bit, because right now, it's not working for us, what we're doing. So hopefully... Um, just make it making a difference might might make a difference if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, how do I? I I'll tell you what, we'll leave them as wing backs for now. I think we'll confirm those changes. We're going to go to a diamond in midfield. Um, just going to try something completely different. If I'm honest, we've not tried this system. It's not one that's really crossed my mind to try. But if we can turn things around here, um, I'll accredit it to this formation. But right now, City on the attack. Um, Silver, Aguero, Chesney with a good save. And Oxley Chamberlain, of course, who we sold for 50 million, misses the open goal. So we are let off the hook. But regardless, we're not playing great right now, although we have a chance. Ball's in the box. Kadira, Wiltshire, Sterling, hit that. It's in. 1 1. We have not deserved that, but that is a good goal by Raheem. Playing that advanced playmaker role, picks up the ball, hits it from range. Our first shot on target gets us a goal and gets us back in the game. Although Sanchez is now injured, which is nothing new there because he is pretty darn injury prone. Uh, I'm going to bring on Zivkovic. We're going to now have uh, both Zivkovic and Depay on Memphis playing up front alongside each other, of course. Our two top goal scorers this year. So maybe between them they can unlock the City defence. I'm actually going to tell the players I'm not happy with the performance. I want to get them fired up. Right now we are not playing our best football. We need to kind of change our system a little bit. Um, so we're going to try and pass the ball shorter. Um and we'll play the, uh, work the ball into the box. I think we're going to try and exploit the middle uh, whilst we play our narrower formation, try and see if we can find some gaps in the Manchester City uh, midfield because right now they're playing two centre mids alongside each other. I'm hoping that we can maybe find some space for our attacking midfielder between their defensive and midfield line uh, to really perhaps get us some opportunities coming our way. Their is going to whip in the ball here. Stones is there. He wins the header. It's in. John Stones with his third goal of the season scores and we are we we are doing well here. I don't know how we're doing well, but we are four uh four. What the hell am I about? We are two one up against Manchester City away. This is a huge result if we could do it. Let's pause there. I'm gonna switch to just counter, I think. And yeah, I am. I'm gonna switch to counter and I'm also gonna drop Royce into a centre mid roll. And I'm actually going to play Royce as the advanced playmaker attack down the middle, or rather Sterling, because I'm actually going to sub Royce off here. And then we're going to go with a central midfielder support uh, for our right centre mid. Going to try something a little bit different here. Um, I'm going to swap Janazai and Sterling, I think. Yeah, we'll sort of and Sterling. Sterling going to play a centre mid role for us. He's a little bit better rounded off than Janazai in terms of aerially. He might be able to contribute a little bit more defensively. So we are going to be looking to hit them on the break if possible. There is a chance here. Zivkovic going to win it. Kadira, Wiltshire. Lots of space in the centre. Janazai, Depay, bury this. He had a real chance there. It's still not cleared. That was a chance to put this game beyond doubt. That is only our first clear cut chance of the game. Ten minutes left on the clock. We are playing for this result we're trying to hit them on the break it's the 89th minute Aguero finding some space out wide can we defend this the ball's played in Oxley chamberlain misses a sitter should clear it that will do Oxley chamberlain thank you very much for the 50 million pounds you have just missed two massive chances this game and unless there's a late sting in the tail we could be about to get an invaluable three points although Aguero Kolarov Kolarov scores with 20 seconds left on the clock, Manchester City grab an equaliser. Wow. Can we score? Sterling? No, we can't. Time has gone. Wow. I, I felt like that was the game. I was so sure. And FM has just broken my heart. And nevertheless, a draw there is still a very good result, but it does kind of mean that Chelsea can extend their gap at the top. Not losing here was important. Given the performance, the fact that we got a point is a miracle in itself. But wow, for Kolarov to score a goal like that <laughs> hurts a lot. I thought we had that after that Oxlade-Chamberlain miss. He missed two that game. 
50 million pounds we got for him and he almost kind of repaid us even further there but wow that late goal is a kick in the teeth anyway let's have a look at our, let's have a look at our schedule and see what we've got coming up so we have got the champions league first leg of champions league first leg the champions league first round um i'm not gonna live com that i don't think uh, the next game i do will be the chelsea game in episode 18 uh, that'll be quite a nice game and then we've got man city a little way after that i'm not sure whether the champions league second round may slot in uh, depending on who we get there we may live com that too uh, but the champions league right now isn't my primary focus right now i i want to win this league and that game against chelsea perhaps might be our last kind of chance to get back into the title race so anyway guys hopefully you enjoyed this video a little bit longer episode going into a little bit more detail with regent my fixtures who's been performing that kind of stuff uh, as always if you've enjoyed smash the like button with this being a little bit more of a rambly uh, episode if you've got to this point in the video if you could try and leave a comment involving the word potatoes just Go down in the comments, write potatoes or put it in a put it in a sentence or whatever. Um, let me know. Just, just write potatoes. I want to know if you've watched to this point and potatoes is the way to show that you've watched to this point. Uh, but anyway, as I mentioned, your viewership as always is appreciated. If you've watched to this point, smash the like button. It does help me out. If you're new to my channel and you've somehow tolerated me for the last however long it's been, hit subscribe. And other than that, guys, I will join you next episode where it will be episode 19 against Chelsea.